Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the original Model 25 air rifle. This air rifle is branded as original and I would refer to it as an original gun but it is in fact manufactured by a company called Meyer and Grammelspacher Dianaverk. Now I have covered the history of Meyer and Grammelspacher in a previous video but very briefly they were the manufacturer of Diana air rifles uh, and air guns in the late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, but during the Second World War, the Diana factory was forced to abandon production of air guns um, so that they could instead make firearms parts for the German war effort. Then after the Second World War, as part of Germany's reparations and limitations on their arms manufacture, um, the Diana trademark along with the tools, machinery and plans were all sold off and they were bought by Milbro in Scotland. So when sanctions were eased in 1950, Meyer and Grammelspacher began making air guns again, but they no longer owned the Diana trademark, but there were still Diana branded guns being made by Milbro. So instead, uh, Meyer and Grammelspacher rebranded the newly made German guns and sold them as original air guns. Um, Meyer and Grammelspacher did however repurchase the Diana trademark in 1984. Now the reason that that background is important, apart from it being, at least in my opinion, interesting, it also explains why there are so many different versions of the Model 25. So uh, leaving aside for a minute the later updated version, which I will come back to you very briefly in a second, there are three different versions of this gun. There is the pre-war Diana Model 25, manufactured by Meyer and Grammelspacher in Germany. There is the post-war Diana Model 25, manufactured by Milbro in Scotland, and also the post-war original Model 25, again manufactured by Meyer and Grammelspacher in Germany. Now all of those guns are very similar, albeit not identical, but things did change slightly more um, when the gun was upgraded in the mid-60s, and that upgraded gun is generally known as the Model 25D, although unhelpfully they were still marked as just Model 25. Um, in order to keep focus, uh, this video is going to be on the original branded Model 25, manufactured uh, between roughly 1950 and 1965, but uh, throughout the video I will point out some of the differences to the other guns. Now that background is true to the best of my knowledge, but it is quite a confusing subject um, as it's quite hard to find any definitive reliable information. So without further ado, let's take a look at the original Model 25 air rifle. The original Model 25 is a uh, spring piston brake barrel air rifle. Uh, it's 38 and a quarter inches or 97 centimeters long and weighs five pounds or two and a quarter kilograms. Uh, the barrel is 15 three quarter inches or 40 centimeters long. Um, this particular example, as you can see, has a rifled barrel, uh, but they were available both rifled and smooth bore. And this particular gun is in 22 caliber, uh, but you could also get them in 177. Now with the obvious exception of the stock, all the parts on the gun are made of steel. Uh, there's no plastic on it anywhere, uh, which I really like. And that is the case of a lot of guns of this age, as it's from a time uh, before plastic was in widespread use on air guns. Now, whilst the parts are all metal, uh, some of them, such as the trigger, trigger guard and end cap, are just uh, cheap, thin, stamped parts rather than nice, solid, milled ones. Now, in terms of finish, uh, this gun is in the white, which is basically just bare metal. Uh, it would originally have been blued, uh, but the bluing has either worn off or more likely been deliberately removed by a previous owner. But you can still see traces of the original blued finish on the rear sight and 
on the cocking link. Um, I do actually have uh, two original Model 25s. Uh, the other one is currently in pieces as it's in very poor condition and needs some restoration. But if you have a look at the main cylinder of that one, you can get a better idea uh, of what the finish was originally. Now, I personally really like the gun in the white. Um, I am surprised actually more guns aren't made and left in the white or at least have nickel plating. The Model 25 has a sporter style hardwood stock, uh, but I'm not sure what type of wood it is. Um, the stock is quite chunky. You can see on the bottom there it's got quite a square, uh, quite a square profile rather than being uh, nicely contoured. Uh, but despite that, it's actually a relatively comfortable stock to hold. Um, with regard to detailing, there are some serrations on the uh, end on the butt uh, to help give some grip when you shoulder the rifle. And it also has some grooves cut into the forearm, uh, again to add grip. Um, when the gun was upgraded to the Model 25D, one of the things that they did was get rid of these grooves and replace them with some stamped checkering. Now the stock appears to have an oiled finish, uh, but I don't think that is the original finish, as the stock on my other Model 25 has a thin lacquer finish, which I suspect is how they were originally finished. And seeing as the metal work on this gun has been refinished, or at least had the original finish removed, um, it may well be that the previous owner has also refinished the stock. Um, I actually really like the look of the stock though, and because it's obviously been refinished a number of years ago, uh, it's really worn in nicely, um, and unless you knew otherwise, I think you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is how it's supposed to be. Now, this particular stock has a split in the underneath, and for reason unbeknownst to me, rather than the, simply glue it, the previous owner has drilled all the way through the stock and secured it with a nut and bolt, uh, but that is not original. The rifle has a very basic trigger, it's just stamped from a piece of sheet metal uh, with a milled sear pinned into the top of it. Now it's a single stage non-adjustable trigger uh, but once you take up the slack of the trigger spring before it starts to release the piston it actually breaks quite crisply. Uh, for such a basic trigger it's not bad at all and then that's protected by just a uh, stamped steel trigger guard. Um, the trigger did get an upgrade in the Model 25D. Uh, the basic trigger was replaced by Original's renowned three ball trigger. Now I like Originals ball triggers, I uh, had one in my Model 50. Um, I think that trigger upgrade is actually the only change on the uh, 25D that I wish was on this gun. Uh, and as you can probably see, uh, the standard Model 25 doesn't have a safety of any kind, either automatic or manual. Looking at the sights, the rear sight has a simple notch at the back and this can be adjusted for elevation using this slider, which acts against a small spring uh, inside to give it tension and keep it in place. Um, the sliding piece on this gun though is a little loose. It should uh, click into a series of small notches underneath as it moves. Uh, interestingly, there are markers on the top, um, but there are no values for them. So you can adjust the elevation in set increments. You just don't know what they are. And the rear sight is attached by way of a dovetail, so it can be adjusted for windage using a punch or something. Now I mentioned earlier that all the parts on this gun were made of steel, which includes the rear sight, but this was changed to a plastic rear sight on the Model 25D. Now the front sight is a simple quite tall blade and like the rear sight it's held in with a dovetail so that it can be adjusted for windage, uh, or at least it should be able to be. Uh, yet another crude modification by the previous owner, the front sight has been uh, badly glued in place. Now I'm not sure whether that's because it was loose or whether they just didn't want it to move if it got knocked or anything. Um, and predictably the basic style of front sight didn't survive the uh, later upgrades. The Model 25D came with a tunnel front sight which clamped into grooves on the barrel. Now the sight picture isn't fantastic but the sights are fine for just plinking. Um, it has no facility to mount the scope as you can see here. Um, the Model 25D 
did feature Original's distinctive raised scope mounting, uh, scope mounting rail, and one of the only differences between the Meyer and Grammelschbacher Schwacker made Original Model 25 and the Milbro made Diana Model 25 is that the Diana had a scope rail. The markings on the Model 25 are all on the main cylinder. As with most, if not all, of the original guns, the original name or logo runs along the top with the model number running the other way across it. Here you can see it says Mod 25. Uh, the only other marking on it is here on the side where it says Made in West Germany. Uh, interestingly though, my other Model 25 just says Made in Germany rather than West Germany. Uh, but despite the choice of wording, uh, this one was also made in West Germany. And apart from the scope rail, the only other difference that I'm really aware of between the Meyer and Grammelschbacher and Milbro made guns is that the Milbro Diana had a serial number and calibre marking. Now I'm now going to do some shooting and testing of the rifle. I'm first going to test the accuracy. I'm going to fire 10 pellets at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a distance of around 12 meters and to do that I'll be using 16 grain air arms Diablo field pellets. Here I have my target. Now up here I have quite a nice sub-inch group, um, which I'm really happy with, but there are three strays, which is a bit disappointing as that increases the overall grouping, but given this is just plinking with open sights, uh, the accuracy isn't too bad at all. Now obviously you'll see that it's shooting uh, off-centre. Um, I haven't done a lot of shooting with this gun since I've had it, and I haven't got the sights spot on yet, so in terms of this accuracy test I was looking for grouping rather than hitting dead centre. Uh, I'm now going to test the power by firing another 10 of those Air Arms Diablo field pellets over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet. Now I've already done all of my calculations and with those 16 grain Air Arms Diablo field pellets I got an average velocity of 406.12 feet per second with a spread of 34.5 feet per second, uh, the highest being 425.3 feet per second and the lowest being 390.8 feet per second. And using that average of 406.12 feet per second that gives me a power of 5.86 foot pounds. So not a huge amount of power, uh, just under half the legal limit in England, but that's plenty of power for just plinking. Now the blue book of air guns, which I have here, says that when these were new, they were supposed to have a velocity of 380 feet per second in 2.2 when they were new, so this one is doing very well for the age. So there you've seen the original Model 25 air rifle. Now, in my opinion, this is a great gun, uh, it looks good, feels nice to shoot, it's very well balanced. Uh, the only downside, which I don't think you can really hold against it, is it's just a bit generic. Uh, there's nothing to really set it apart from any number of other similar rifles. Now, the Model 25 in this configuration hasn't been made in however many decades, so you can't just walk into a gun shop and buy one. But despite that, they're far from rare, so you probably won't have to wait long to find one come up for sale, either online or in a uh, gun shop that sells older second-hand guns. And you can expect to pay around £50, maybe a bit either way, depending on condition. So, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.